Welcome back to the working memory model. What are we going to be doing today? I hear you ask. Well, let me show you. In the last PowerPoint, we saw how the model worked and we saw how different it was from the multi store model, how it focuses on uh, short term memory, for example. Um, but as we're going to go through now, we're going to be looking and thinking about particular points that tell us uh, how it is an improvement on the multi-store, uh, what, what are the weaknesses, and also we'll be looking at uh, research studies to see whether they support or contradict the model. And don't forget when we're looking at re research studies, we're asking ourselves how believable are those studies, how convincing are those studies. Okay, so in terms of criticisms, there are some positive points of the of the multi of the a working memory model and we'll, I'll talk more about them but just to give you a brief intro um, it explains some observations uh, and that we that we notice when we look around the world uh, more simply than the multi store model so for example if I gave you a task that involved listening to me um, and combined that with another task where you had to draw a picture of something those two things would be fairly easy to do because you're doing uh, two tasks that involve different components. And you probably remember that if you were doing a, a listening task, then that would be using uh, the phonological loop. And if you're doing uh, a drawing task, then that would be the visual spatial sketch pad. But if I gave you two tasks that involved uh, that involve doing similar things. So if I gave you two tasks that involve listening at the same time, then you would find that a lot more difficult. Uh, and this model explains exactly why that's the case, because the model says that the two components have got limited capacity. Uh, the model also explains the word length effect, and we'll see a little bit more about that in a minute. Problems with the uh, the, the model compared to the multi-store is that it really only focuses on short-term memory where the multi-store tries to give a picture of uh, memory as a whole uh, this model only uh, focuses on uh, short-term memory it's also not very clear really what the central executive is and that's a, uh, and that's a problem uh, the, the explanation isn't doesn't, the explanation of what the central executive is doesn't really explain very much. And quite a lot of psychologists feel that a single uh, central executive is probably wrong and there are probably several executive components uh, within the mind. And we'll see more about that later too. Okay. Um, so let's think first of all about research that might support the working memory model. Uh, now Hitch and Badley uh, they gave participants two tasks to do simultaneously. So they've been asked to do two things at the same time. Task one occupied the central executive. Um, and then task two either involved the articulatory loop or involved the articulatory loop and the central executive. So when task two involved using both the central executive and the articulatory loop, then people were slower at doing task one. Um, and this suggests that if you have to try and do two tasks involving the same component, uh, that will cause a difficulty. OK, and that's um, and that's really supports the whole the model, because the model says that uh, the uh, each of the components has limited capacity. Um, and also it suggests, which also goes on with the model, is that if we're doing two different kind of tasks using different components, then they shouldn't interfere with each other and performance wouldn't be, um, wouldn't be affected. Uh, thinking about the phonological loop and the articulatory process now, um, the word length effect uh, is, is important here. And generally speaking, what, what people have found is that it's, and this is a general observation, is that if I give you a list of short words to remember, you, you might, you're more likely to remember more short words than if I give you a list of long words to remember. Um, and so, uh, Badley explains this by saying that the phonological loop holds 
the amount of information that you can actually say in two seconds. So that's going to make it harder to remember a list of long words compared to a list of, sh of short words. Um, and the longer words can't be rehearsed because they don't fit onto the phonological loop. So this, uh, this, re this research and this observation about the word length effect uh, does support um, Bradley and Hitch's model. But an interesting thing is that if you um, if you stop people using the articulatory loop, um, if you if you stop them uh, uh, and you give them a repetition task to do, and then ask them to learn words, then it doesn't matter what the whether the words are long or short, they tend to remember the same number of uh, of words, um, which may remind you. Have a think if you can think of which uh, piece of research that we looked at. Um, for the, the multi-store model that involved stopping people rehearsing. Okay, so another piece of research that supports the model um, is one that Badly did to show the existence of the visual spatial sketch pad. So participants were given a visual tr tracking task. In other words, they were shown a dot on a screen and they had to follow it around with the finger. And then at the same time, they were given one of two different tasks. One of them involved describing the angles on a capital letter F. So they'd be saying things like you go up and then you go along and then you come back down the same bit and then you do a shorter line. Or however you would describe doing a letter F, that wasn't very good, was it? Anyway, uh, the second task they could be given would be a verbal task. So they might be asked to repeat uh, words that the experimenter said. Now, what Badly found was that task uh, that people were able to do the visual uh, tracking task but found it difficult describing the letter F and his argument was because they were both using uh, the visual spatial sketch pad but when uh, the second task was a verbal one that was a lot easier to do and they were still able to do the, vi the visual tracking task because one used the visual spatial sketch pad and the other one used a different component the other one uh, used the uh, a phonological loop so this shows that doing two tasks that involve the same system can cause problems and two tasks doing it involving different systems don't. So that they, these pieces of research seem fairly strong. You might want to be thinking um, again um, about this kind of uh, laboratory research and uh, the kind of issues of, of ecological validity that we might face with those. Looking at brain damaged uh, patients, uh, we can also uh, have some, find some supporting evidence for the working memory model. So, for example, one individual had good learning abilities, so he could learn lots of information, um, but he found it difficult to learn words in pairs that were presented out loud. So, you could argue that probably his visual spatial sketch pad was working quite well, um, but part of his phonological loop wasn't because that, because that was damaged. Um, there was also another um, case study done by Shalice and Warrington on, a, on KF, who was a man who had a, a motorbike accident. And they found that he forgot auditorily learned words more quickly than visually learned words. Again, suggesting that we've got two different systems working there. Um, another, another patient, LH, he'd been involved in a car accident. And he performed better on spatial tasks than ones involving visual imagery. And again, this supports the idea that there are separate visual and spatial systems. So that the sketch pad has got two different parts to it, if you like. But not all psychologists are convinced by the, the working memory model. And uh, a lot of them, as, we, as I said earlier, they challenge this idea that we've got one central executive. So what they might be. So, for example, we might have one executive system that looks out for verbal information and deals with that. So there might be one executive controlling the uh, uh, that called again? the phonological loop, and then another executive part of the brain controlling the visual spatial sketch pad. Uh, Desposito's got an interesting idea. Two thousand and seven. 
uh, he said that maybe the, the working memory as a system isn't a separate system. It just might be the fact that we experience it as a system when lots of different parts of the brain work together. Um, that's an interesting one. We can, uh, we'll probably explore that a little bit more when, when we get into class. Having said that, overall, most people uh, still regard the working memory model as an improvement on the multi-store model. Most importantly, because it takes that single short-term memory store and splits it up into different functions. Well, uh, oh yes, and one more thing. Joni Mitchell says, I've looked at clouds from both sides now. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>